four dead after mass shooting at Westmoreland Bar. Four men were killed when gunmen shot up a bar in Bethelton, Westmoreland on Monday night. Four others were injured in the incident. The deceased are 41 year old Tyler Demon Baker, Odin Scott, otherwise called Moses, Rocky Lawrence, and an unidentified man. Police reports are that about 10 20 p.m., patients were gathered at a bar in Bethelton when a black Toyota Fila motor vehicle drove up and several armed men alighted from the vehicle and immediately opened gunfire on the crowd. The police were alerted to the scene and on their arrival, eight persons were found suffering from gunshot wounds. The injured persons were taken to hospital, where four men were confirmed dead on arrival, while the others were admitted. The unidentified man is said to be an accomplice of a gunman. No motive was established for the killings. The investigation is ongoing. The, the police indicated that all resources are being used to bring the perpetrators to justice in the Westmoreland quadruple murder. In the meantime, the Westmoreland police assure that all resources will be utilized to bring the perpetrators of the quadruple killing in Westmoreland to justice. Head of the Westmoreland Police, Superintendent Neil Dobson, said a quantity of ammunition was found in Spencer's pocket. He said an illegal firearm was taken from the scene. Superintendent Dobson is urging individuals to remove the weapon from the scene to turn it over to lawmen. Describing the act as devastating one, Superintendent Dobson said the incident is being investigated. 8.54 cartridges was found in his pocket and information is that a firearm was removed from the scene. Is prevented. We are appealing to those involved in hiding or removing the firearm from the scene to immediately turn it over to the police. Every effort must be made to remove illegal guns from our streets, especially when they are connected with acts of violence. The incident marks a dark moment in the fight against gun violence in Westmoreland, a parish that has achieved marked reduction in murders and other categories of violent crime. This is a devastating tragedy for the New Roads community and for the family who are now mourning the loss of their loved one. We understand your pain that come with losing family members under such tragic and horrific circumstances and we stand with you during your period of grief. The police is actively investigating the matter and all resources are being utilized to bring the perpetrators to justice. We are calling on anyone with information about the shooting or those who have witnessed the incident to come forward and assist the police. It's at Buchanan to represent PNP in East Portland. The People's National Party PNP has confirmed attorney Asad Buchanan as its representative for East Portland in the upcoming general election. In a media release on Tuesday, the PNP said Buchanan was prepared to represent the interests of the constituents with commitment and focus. Buchanan had made significant contributions to the community service and advocacy, establishing strong connections with the people of East Portland. He has set his sights on initiatives such as improving education, healthcare and economic opportunities for residents. He envisions a constituency that prioritizes collaboration, growth and empowerment for all, the PNP stated. I am honored to represent the people of East Portland, Buchanan is also quoted as saying. Buchanan replaces Colin Shaka Flame Bell, who resigned last month citing a lack of support. Bell was selected last August to challenge the ruling Jamaica Labour Party Member of Parliament and Marie Valls. The PNP says it now has all 63 representatives in place as it prepared to contest the upcoming general election. Education Minister addressing issue which resulted in some teachers not getting September salaries. An issue which resulted in teachers not getting their September salaries is being addressed. The update was given by Education Minister Fiva Williams while responding to queries from Opposition Member Dr. Angela Brownberg in Parliament. Mrs. Williams assured that issues with salary payments for teachers have for the most part been reduced over time. This is due to the implementation of an electronic human resource management system that handles payroll and pensions. Mrs. Williams noted that oftentimes, late payment issues are connected to new teachers entering the system and as such, steps were taken to ensure that these teachers got paid for September. She pointed out that the recent problem arose due to the late submission of documents. With regards to payment for teachers, and I'm assuming that you're talking about instances in which there may be late payment. I am happy to say we've gotten significantly better since 
over the last year, year and a half, because we have worked assiduously to implement the My HR system, which is a system that is a payroll, HR, and pension system as well. So we've gotten significantly better, and you're not hearing in the public domain these cries of being late. At the same time, though, I want to say that it's not perfect, and especially when we begin a new school year and bring on new teachers, there tends also to be that situation this year, this school year, we worked overtime to ensure that we don't have new teachers who are not getting their payment at the end of September. And we did a very good job. I know that there is only one school so far, of which I am aware, that told us that some teachers did not get their payment on time. And when we looked into it, in, um, in many of the cases, there were a handful of teachers Documents came in late. Huh? No, another one. Is there a situation at George Henley? Okay, I'll look into that. But it's mostly when we get into September, it's uh, mostly the new teachers coming onto the system because there's paperwork that the ministry needs to get, and sometimes it takes a little while to, to get to where it's going. But we are very conscious of not causing delays, and that's why we have worked so hard to get that system into the ministry, because otherwise payroll tends to be manual, and we are quickly moving away from, from the manual nature of payroll. Numbers used to identify soldiers after key Clark shooting deaths. Former head of legal affairs of the Jamaica Defense Force, JDF, Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Cole said Monday that based on statements that were prepared, there was no defensive way of identifying soldiers involved in the shooting death of accountant Keith Clark at his house in St. Andrew on May 27, 2010. Cole was giving testimony in the Home Circuit Court where three soldiers are on trial for the murder of Clark. On trial are Lance Corporals Greg Tinglin and Odell Buckley, as well as Private Arnold Henry. According to Cole, in written reports that have been signed and submitted to the Independent Commission of Investigations in the COM and the police, only numbers were used to identify the soldiers as opposed to names. But Cole told the court that the report was done by officers of lower ranks, which he later signed. He said he did not verify who exactly the numbers were attached to, saying that he wanted to sign it quickly so that it could be sent off to the relevant authorities. The numbers, he said, would have been assigned to the three soldiers were 38, 42, and 44. I agree with you that I cannot assure this court and the jury present that these numbers are probably identified to the men in the dock. I think it was Buckley thinking and Henry. I see some men in the dock, but I couldn't tell to you who is who because it has been 14 years. The three soldiers gave statements. I gave instruction that a particular process that was developing dealing with these types of matters should be allowed. The process was to instead of using their names in the statements, we used numbers. The reason for this was that the press was being very inclusive and wanted to know the details of person's identity. In addition, we wanted to ensure the soldiers felt comfortable in a safe space and that their identity would not be disclosed. So we arrived at some numbers which we would have used before in similar situation. The numbers were not assigned by me. The numbers were assigned by the persons who took the statements. I first saw a letter presented to me with certain numbers, and I sent that letter and sent it off to the persons who needed to get it. I did not verify the numbers. There was no time to verify. We needed to get the information to the persons who needed it to get it as quickly as possible. If there were any issues that arose, we would deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis, stated the army man. Cole told the court that there were around 46 numbers that were assigned to soldiers who were on the operation at Clark's house on the morning he was killed. Numbers were assigned starting with number 1 and continue after 44 and you never verify any of those numbers above 44. I was presented with the entire list of numbers but the police officer concentrated based on his instructions on 3. About 46 numbers were on the list. It was the police officer who called my attention to the 3 numbers to the court. Keith Clark was killed during a police military operation 
at his 18 Kirkland Close home in, Rose, in Red Hill, St. Andrew, during the security forces search for a fugitive then, Dudu Skog, and was believed to be hiding in the basement of Clark's house along with seven of his heavily armed cronies. Clark was shot more than 20 times, including in his back by soldiers inside the master bedroom of his house. Remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.